So, life's going well for you. You've got your beautiful house in a highly sought after locale, and you need a car that'll show the world that you're on the way up. Sure, you could buy that standard German sedan, but what's the point in that? You want something with more flair, sporty overtones, something that sets you apart from the rest of the mob. Mercedes-Benz wasn't the first to come up with the idea of the four-door coupe when they launched the CLS in 2004, but they certainly were the ones who made it popular. The CLS received a major update in late 2014. The smooth raked roofline and low stance remain, but the rest of the styling has been changed to bring it into line with newer Mercedes like the CLA and the C-Class. The new multi-beam LED headlights are a particular standout. Rather than traditional bulbs, each headlamp is made up of 24 LEDs, individually controllable by the onboard computer to mask out vehicles ahead with the high beams on. The interior is a combination of old and new Mercedes-Benz. You still have this telephone-like keypad, and unfortunately you don't get the buttons or the switch gear from the excellent S-Class. What you do get is this 8.4-inch display. It looks good enough to touch, but you'll have to be content with twirling the command dial down here on the console. The CLS 500 is loaded with standard equipment, including heated and ventilated seats, adaptive cruise control, digital radio and TV, and a 360 degree around view camera system. But if you want your CLS even more luxurious, you can spec it up with an assortment of leathers and AMG packs. If you're buying a CLS, it's not because you're a limo driver. That swooping, beautiful roofline that we love the look of, it comes at a price. It's difficult to get into the back and what's left of my hair is touching the roof and I'm a tick over six foot. That said, I'm sitting behind my own driving position and I've got plenty of knee room, there's lots of storage, there's cup holders, and I'm certainly far from uncomfortable. But these days, the CLS isn't the only game in town, and the team in Ingolstadt have been working on revisions to their formula with this, the Audi A7 Sportback TDI by Turbo. Mercedes-Benz pretty much had the market to themselves until the Audi A7 arrived in Australia in 2011. And while it does share some of the design philosophy of the CLS, the execution is slightly different. Rather than a traditional boot lid, the A7 is a liftback, making it almost as practical as the Audi A6 Avant with which it shares its platform. Visual changes to the latest Audi A7 are subtle. In typical Audi style, the A7 is a mix of sharp lines and easily one of the more dramatic lookers in their lineup. There's a new lighting design on offer which Audi calls Matrix LED, though unlike the CLS, they're an optional extra. The interior is every bit the luxuriously high quality place that it's always been. All the materials feel premium to the touch and the design is clean and very well thought out. Audi's multimedia interface has also been upgraded with a new processor for improved graphics on the instrument display and the centre screen. Unfortunately, Audi are clinging to the idea of an extensive options list. Things that should be standard at this price, like an electric steering column and basic heated seats, are optional extras. Just like the CLS, rear headroom's a bit tight, but there's still plenty of space to get comfortable. At a pinch, you can fit three abreast, unlike the CLS, which swaps out the middle belt for a piece of furniture. But no one is buying an Audi A7 or a Mercedes-Benz CLS to be chauffeured. I'm in the CLS 500, which under the bonnet has a 4.7 litre bi-turbo V8. It'll send 300 kilowatts and 600 newton metres to the rear wheels through a new 9-speed auto. Now you might think rear-wheel drive V8 and think it could be a bit uncouth, but this is anything but. It's such a refined engine. And that marriage to the new 9-speed auto is a match made in heaven. You wouldn't even risk waking your neighbours in a leafy riverside suburb. The CLS 500 has adaptive suspension. Now what that means is there are two settings, comfort and sport. But to be honest, out here on the road, sport can be a little bit too firm. So we'd suggest to just slip it into comfort and enjoy the ride. 
Mercedes-Benz claim a fuel use of just 8.6 litres per 100 kilometres. But if you unleash the V8's potential, you're bound to use more than that. If you've got plenty of money, you don't want to be driving a Toyota Corolla around the place when you can drive something like this, the Audi A7. Now, Audi have mated this superb bi-turbo diesel to an equally smooth eight-speed automatic transmission. The first thing you notice is that you can drive around in top gear all day long because you've got all this torque, 650 Newton meters from just 1400 RPM. Along with the beautifully smooth drivetrain is the in-car comfort, which is superb. The seats are wonderfully sumptuous, so you sink into them. The glass is double glazing, so you hear nothing. Essentially, this is a beautiful place to be. One of the highlights of this Audi A7 is definitely its ride quality. Now, it doesn't have adaptive suspension, but it still manages to soak up all the bumps whilst having very good body control. On top of all that, we've got a claimed fuel economy of just 6.1 litres per 100 k's, meaning you'll spend less time at the fuel station and more time on the road. So there you have it. They're both wonderfully luxurious and super stylish ways of getting to work during the week and at the golf course on the weekend. But what are they like when you want to have some fun behind the wheel? Now this is a bi-turbo V8, but you really wouldn't know because when you plant the foot, there's no artificial surge in power and it sounds fantastic. So straight off the bat, the Merc definitely has the hooligan box ticked by being a rear wheel drive V8, even if the driver of this car might be dressed like a banker. So while the CLS 500's V8 may not be as magnificently brutal as the AMG models, it certainly will give you a smile when you open up the taps. Now you're probably watching this and thinking, this is a rear wheel drive, it's a V8, we're in some horrible conditions, this is gonna be tetchy in the corners. But Mercedes-Benz has a very active ESC system and it actually keeps things in check very well, even when you're driving pretty enthusiastically. Now one of this car's best features is its active bolstering. You throw it in the corners and the seats just literally come in to give you a hug and keep you where you need to be. Now you can talk all you like about diesels and quattro, but there's just nothing better than a Mercedes-Benz V8. It's so smooth, it's refined, and yet still you get that oral sensation when you give it a kick in the pants. Under the bonnet is Audi's high output, three litre bi-turbo diesel, and let me tell you, put the foot down and it sounds like a volcano erupting. Very responsive too, and very refined for a diesel. The A7 is about 65 kilowatts down on the CLS, but I've got 650 Newton meters coming in at just 1400 RPM. And as you can see, we are literally flying. So even though it's pouring here at this RAC Driver Education Center in Perth, we don't care because the A7's got quattro. And quattro means grip in this sort of weather. There's not even a hint of slide coming into some of these corners, but you can still notice the weight transfer. It's a big, heavy car weighing about 1,800 kilos. When it's all said and done, this high output three litre bi-turbo diesel proves that diesel is no longer a dirty word. So, Tony, let's pretend for a second that we're wealthy men. Which of these are you taking home? CLS wins on styling, but Audi have caught up there too with this compressed front grille and the new Matrix LED headlights. Yep, true, that front end is impressive by Audi, but so is the Merc and that's got a new grille itself and as well as some new headlights. So for me, 
this Merc makes a bit more of a statement on the road. Yeah, the highlight though on this car is its three litre diesel. It is phenomenal. It also sounds like a V8. I reckon it sounds better than your CLS. This actually has a V8 and it's an absolute ripper as well. Both these cars are hugely impressive, particularly for under 170 grand. They make a big statement. They certainly do. There are definitely no losers here.